Good morning from Ruby Hill in Denver, Colorado, and I wanted to give a spring update to my little mini food forest in the front yard. And um, what I'm going to be doing is actually focusing in a little more on my perennials with this video. Um, I did a video last fall and a lot of the annuals were mixed in and you couldn't really see my perennials very well. So I haven't planted many uh, annuals yet so this is a good time to get a closer look at my perennials and how they're doing and they're really exploding um, right now because we had some nice rain the past couple days which is rare in Denver so I'm going to talk about a couple things that I didn't get to touch on in the fall video and I am getting ready to put my house on the market it's going to be going on the market in about two weeks and sadly I'll be leaving my little permaculture here but I'm on to a new design. I have um, actually um, given the opportunity to work on a 400 square foot community garden plot in Boulder in the beautiful community garden there. So that's really exciting. So I'm getting going on that design right now. But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get, get started. And um, we'll start over on the right side this time. And I have, these are all of my herbs. And again, I keep them close to the door for easy access. I use them a lot. And someone, I think, was telling me this is Russian tarragon, and it's just a beautiful herb. And it can be used in salads, eggs, it's awesome. And behind it, I actually have, this year is the first time I have some horseradish um, flowering, and it's so beautiful. So, I got a great harvest out of the horseradish last year, and you can see a little baby horseradish right here and some, it looks like some dill coming up from last year. Or maybe that's fennel, I'm not sure. Um, there is a, a an actually a, a weed, considered a weed, that I love to encourage. Um, and that's, that's one of it right there. Um, it's called lamb's quarter. And in the spring, it's delicious to eat. It actually, it's, it's very rich in flavor and it tastes a lot like spinach, so. Um, and I have a little calendula coming up there, and my um, mint is kind of spreading everywhere like a ground cover, and I think a lot of people think negatively about mint, but in permaculture systems, it's great um, because it covers your sheet mulch with a ground cover. And this is a beautiful lemon balm, just going great, and I, this is the first year I've gotten my chives to flower. I, I'm just so excited. I have two chives going. And they just take a while to get established here, I guess, in Denver. But, um, you know, they're beautiful. So there they go. Um, and radicchio is a, is a perennial plant. So I have two of those coming up. Um, and this is my sea kale. And the sea kale is flowering. Um, and the sea kale, you eat the little flower, at, uh, the flowers um, before they flower. Um, they taste like broccoli. You don't eat the leaves of sea kale. It's, the leaves are very bitter, but if you're gonna put in sea kale, um, I would recommend that you put in multiple plants instead of just one. Like do a patch of sea kale, interplant it maybe with some other things. And then back here we have some sage that survived the winter. We have two sage plants. And thyme, two different kinds of thyme. And this is the banana yucca, which I didn't get to talk about last year, but it is an edible. Um, it would be good if you have like a dry microclimate in your system. You can put some of the banana yucca in. Um, and it's supposed to provide fl fruit. I mean, it's going in its, to its fourth year now, so I haven't gotten fru fruit out of it yet, but uh, hopefully it will. I need to study up on that plant a little more. And this is lovage, and lovage creates a, a ton of biomass. Actually, we had some snow last month, which killed it off quickly, and it's then it's back up again. So it's a great plant to chop and drop and throw around under your fruit bushes and fruit trees. Um, and then I've also plant, planted like a ground cover of buckwheat and um, field peas and some grasses and things. Um, again, trying to outcompete the bindweed. I have some onions coming up and garlics. And this is beautiful sorrel. The sorrel, I cannot believe this stuff is taking off. These were just like teeny little plants last year. And sorrel, I'm finding, is just delicious. It, um, 
one really great way to use it is to chop it up and saute it and then put it in with your scrambled eggs. And it actually tastes a lot like um, cheddar cheese. It, almost, it gives like a little bit of a sour, sort of that cheddar cheese kind of flavor. So if you're missing eating cheese, you can add sorrel into your eggs and get, get that cheese-like flavor. It's also great on, um, it's also great in salads and of course great with fish because it has that lemony, like citric kind of flavor to it. And I have several, I have several um, sorrel plants that are just taking off. And these are shallots. These are the garlic chives. I just put them in last year. Um, I think if I was staying, I'd add more garlic chives because those things are just like delicious. Um, and some parsley coming up. Um, okay, and so let's get over here to my guild. And this is the um, lap and cherry, self-pollinating. Hardy to Colorado. It's having some issues actually. Um, I'd like to get someone out here to prune it if I wasn't still in the house because um, a couple of the branches are not leafing out and so I don't, I'm not sure what's up with that but underneath the um, cherry you can see my beautiful comfrey. When the comfrey is flowering this time of year it's just gorgeous and it's just a really prolific plant with some sorrel um, and then Okay, I gotta show you guys this this comfrey here. <laughs> this was um, the Russian comfrey, and that was a teeny little plant last year, and look at it this year. That is amazing, it's huge. I'm wondering if it's gonna flower. And then this is Baptisia, which is tucked into the corner, and um, when I took the food forage class last year with Eric Tonsmeyer, um, he was, I was telling him about my system, and he was saying that I should one third of my system should be nitrogen fixers. So if there is a flaw in my system, it's that I don't have enough nitrogen fixers. Um, so if I were staying, I would definitely just be adding a ton of nitrogen fixers and less annuals this year, um, and maybe a few more perennial. Um, and that's a lead plant, and it's just starting to leaf out. The lead plant comes in a little later, but that's also a nitrogen fixer. And some strawberries. I have kind of strawberries kind of, I just kind of put them around, like almost like a ground cover. I just put them everywhere. And oregano and the mint and the thyme. So I'm gonna try not to move too fast. Um, this is a really crappy camcorder. So um, more sorrel and garlic coming up. I just threw a bunch of garlic around in the spring actually, cause I didn't get around to doing it in the fall and it's still coming up. And this is an echinacea that I put in last year, and it, it is coming up, so that's great. And this is a buffalo currant that I put in last year to complement my other buffalo currant. So I try not to crunch the sheet mulch. I do have, these are keyhole beds, so um, I do have um, areas that I'm really supposed to walk, and I try to keep off the sheet mulch. <clears throat> this is a service berry. And I don't know if you can see the berries, but this is, they also call it, a, there's a card coming by. They also call it a June berry um, because it's actually one of the first of the fruiting bushes that comes in. And we'll get fruits in June. And um, the birds love the service berry. They taste a lot like blueberries. And I'm actually um, gonna net it um, pretty soon. <laughs> so the birds, cause the birds got to it last year. Alright, and then this is garlic and a little more strawberries through here, and this is, I'm so excited, my asparagus. And I've been eating off of this this year. This is the first year I can eat off the asparagus. I'm letting a few stalks come up, but I'm eating a lot of them, and you can see I've been eating them. <laughs> they're great. I just come outside and break them off and just eat them. I can't even cook them because they're so good. And the front I have my flowers because this is in my front yard, so I try to make it somewhat attractive. Um, so you can kind of get a, a view, have, you know, these bricks here. And um, these are the irises. I, I mean, they just, irises apparently love sheep mulch because I put in like just a little, like a couple things and they are just taking off. So not an edible flower, but a beautiful flower. And I have some uh, yarrow tucked in there. And this is a flower. I don't know the name of this flower. I think it's Larkspur. I'm not sure, but it's really hardy in Colorado. And Sharona was telling me it actually lived through the entire winter over. She has a, her own little permi place um, going on over in Ruby Hill. 
and th these are little baby borage. Borage kind of sells seeds and it, it's um, a very beneficial flower for bees. Um, and also you can eat the flowers. Um, I put in a St. John's wort. It's not doing very well, so I'm not sure if it's gonna flower. This is the verbana, and this is the um, chimney bellflower. I love this one. It, is, it throws off a lot of leggy extensions, and you can eat those flowers. Poppies, lilies, different kinds of lilies. And this is the Monrovia bee balm. Bee balm, I have two different kinds of bee balm. I have this one, and that's taking off, and this one. And if you watched my fall video, you saw how the bees love those. Another car coming by. Um, and this is um, the Rosa Rugosa, uh, again with edible rose hips. And, you know, he's doing great. I, I put um, some compost around a lot of my perennials this year, just around the base of them to fertilize them a little bit. Um, so this is a just a cool flower, and I really don't know what it is. Does anybody know what this flower is? It's a actually a xeriscape flower, so I'm not really sure other than just being pretty. And this is the salvia that I put in last year and it's, it seems like it's taking hold. So that's what I wanted. Salvia can get very big and the poppy. So, okay. Um, I'll probably put, throw some annuals into there before I put the house for sale. And what you're looking at now is my raspberry patch and it's a mix of yellow and, ras and red raspberries. Um, and right behind it, I have the sand cherry, which is a Colorado native. And the raspberries spread like a ground cover. I just had a couple raspberries up in this section, and now you've seen, you can see that they have spread. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you want to control them, you can, um, but plan on them spreading. Um, they're coming up over my berm. And uh, I actually want to show you some of my earthworks that I installed. And I don't know if you can see, but David Braden helped me set up the system with the drip irrigation and over there we have my rhubarb and then this is a swale and I don't know if you can see it but it's a we dug a ditch you know we used a, a bunyip I think to measure the slope and it goes all the way up to the, the banana yucca is my swale because there is a slight slope so we did install the swale um, it's here to trap the water so that's great um, by the way, if you're installing sheet mulch, you see those stones there? That's the water, um, access to the water for the city. And it was funny, like, I was out here installing the sheet mulch, and the water guy comes by, and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, well, I'm making garden beds. And he's like, well, don't cover up that, <laughs> because we need access to that. So, um, yeah, that's a little tip. Don't cover that up if you're sheet mulching. And let's see, so we got some more garlic here, and this is a red currant. Um, I don't like the fruits on that one as much, but it's a very attractive plant. Um, and then these are my Nanking cherries. I have two of them. They're fruiting. They, they actually were one of the first ones to flower. They're, they've been done flowering and they leafed out. And, and this is the Siberian shrub, pea shrub, it's taking off. Interestingly, um, oops. I'm, wa I'm walking on ground cover. Um, with the Siberian pea shrub, I've been noticing aphids. So I'll, I don't know if you can see, but there's a bunch of aphids right here on the Siberian pea shrub. But I've also been noticing ladybugs <laughs> here too. So, um, and they've been, the ladybugs have been hanging out on the Siberian pea shrub and, and doing their spring thing. So that's been kind of fun. Um, let's see. So this is a buffalo currant. This is one of the first, um, actually, fruit bushes that I put into the system. And um, these beautiful yellow flowers, and I have the other one over there supporting it. So I'm sure I'm going to get a ton of fruit off of it. It's doing great. And this is my second guild, and this is a Mount Royal Plum. Timberline Gardens is a great place to go to talk about fruit bushes and fruit trees. The, the guys over there are pretty good. Um, and then underneath I have comfrey and strawberries. And the comfrey is kind of taking over. So it's not a very balanced guild, but it is what it is. Um, and, you know, I have some volunteer 
greens coming up from last year and Let's see over here I planted some of Sharona's um, Jerusalem artichokes and they'll probably take off and I've got some also some flowers in there and the hollyhocks are back in the corner and this is a goji berry going on its third year and it's just huge but gorgeous I think I would recommend if you're gonna do goji do two so they do well in Colorado and um, this is one of the flowers the first flowers coming out for the goji <clears throat> it's a beautiful little flower and excuse me I'm gonna clear my throat <coughs> my goodness too much talking okay um, and over here we have the Josta berry which is a fruit bush I'm still trying to figure out um, I haven't gotten any food off of it yet so I'm not really sure what it does it did flower already it was a very short flowering it was like a week or two so I'm not sure what's gonna happen with that I haven't been seeing a lot of bees yet in my system which I mean if I was staying I think I would need to keep bees uh, this is a understory of strawberries I have a beautiful strawberry coming up right there huge um, and this is a gooseberry and the gooseberry I'm finding actually spreads a lot like strawberry the lower branches will reroot themselves into the sheet mulch and I recommend if you're using city city water to do any of your drip or watering for the spring um, this is called the boogie blue which um, John Kohler off of Growing Your Greens recommends, um, and it's a filter. We struggle with chloramines in the city of Denver. Uh, once you start researching chloramines, it's a nightmare. Chloramines are very difficult to filter out. Um, and unfortunately, it's gonna mess with your soil biologics, um, especially if you're trying to do no-till systems. So um, some people get whole house filters. They're very expensive. Um, I'm using the Boogie Blue, and I try to use the natural rainwater as much as possible. Um, I've got some things going on in the backyard that I don't want to share on the internet, but let's just say I have some stuff. So, and then um, these are these are my grapes. This is a Saint Therese grape, and it's the one um, that they recommend at Timberline Garden for Colorado, and it's it's spreading great. It's a beautiful plant. Um, so I wanted to show. Um, you know, with my sheet mulch, my initial sheet mulch, um, I used a chunkier, like, free stuff from Excel, and I kind of wanted to show how it's doing, because here it is four years later, and then I've added um, the natural finds from Botanic Gardens, that the Botanic Gardens use. It's There's a local landscaping company in Lakewood called um, the uh, Mountain High Tree Landscape, and what they do is they, they get their trees they take the trees down and then they make it into mulch and they sell their mulch and then uh, okay yeah this is pretty pretty dry in here and I still have some chunky stuff because I use chunky stuff for my I mean this is like four years later so it's not really breaking down that fast but there we go into the the good stuff right there so that's kind of what it looks like the sheep mulch so you know normally with the the sort of clay silty Colorado soils that don't have a lot of organic matter in them to have this kind of soil in my front yard is pretty amazing and it's just from using wood chips and manure and building up my and just adding organic ma matter every year but um I didn't like how slowly the um for me I wanted more like a soil instead of you know like a hugel culture kind of thing uh, that's used in permaculture so I started adding this stuff called the natural finds and I'm going to show you um, a pile of this stuff, but I got it delivered. It's $14 a yard, and there's a del $75 delivery fee, and I like I like how the um, natural finds breaks down. It's the stuff they sift off from the stuff they try to sell for landscaping, and it's actually like the really good stuff. Um, and what I wanted to show over here, I've got some uh, dock dock going on and you know I used to try to remove the dock from my system but dock is a great uh, mineral accumulator so a great thing to do would be to chop this down and throw it down around um, as fertilizer for your garden so um, I'm letting the dock come up a bit right now and over here this is a very difficult section to get anything to grow in I have some flowers and um, but this is a golden rain tree, which throws 
seeds, little miniature trees all over my sheet mulch that I have to pull out every year so I don't get trees. I don't, I don't want that kind of forest. I don't want that kind of food forest. But I also, um, this is a very dry area and hardly anything grows here because the tree shades it out. So dry and shade is very tough. But I got this, um, this man, uh, man, I can't pronounce it. Manzatina? Manzanita. Manzanita. A manzanita bush that supposedly does well in a dry and shaded environment. I think um, bulbs would be great. Spring bulbs. Uh, you can see my spring bulbs do well here, but I put some begonias in. So I don't know. I have to think more about that system. Um, okay, so this is sort of a final shot of my sheet mulch, but I want to take you to the side because I did an experiment. I did an experiment um, over here with, I got some rotten hay from the Jefferson County Fairgrounds. And I didn't uh, put down any newspaper or cardboard. I just put slabs of rotten hay down and then a little bit of those natural finds I was talking about on top. I want to show you that two years ago I put it down. I want to show you the soil that's been created by um, this, by the rotten hay. Here we go. So there's the soil. So rotten hay also just makes soil for you. So, or, you know, a lot of people worry about hay having seed in it um, if you're gardening, but I haven't had a problem with that. I haven't been getting a lot of grasses coming up. Um, this is a huge se section of um, lamb's quarters. I actually got a little bit of Jerome's giant lamb's quarters <laughs> last year from the Rocky Mountain Permaculture Institute in Basalt. And I threw the, some of those seeds down here. And I'm really excited because they're coming up. Here's some of the giant, the giant's lamb's quarters. And they're, they're like really yummy. So I recommend lamb's quarters as a weed that you don't weed. <laughs> And I tried to put some other things over here, some mustard and some brassicas, and I have some lettuce. Well, that lettuce seems to be doing okay. I don't water over here, so everything, I do a little bit of watering just to get them established, but, and I have some peas coming up over here, so. Um, yeah, so I would say you could try rotten hay too. Um, although the problem with rotten hay is that they're using chemicals to grow hay. So you want to try to get organic hay, which is actually a little bit challenging in this area. So you want to be really careful of your sources, um, especially if you want to grow organically. And then I'm just going to go in the backyard for a second. Um, and I don't do a ton of permaculture back here yet. I have a compost pile, compost bin. But these are my natural finds um, that I have left over from last year. And I'm going to take, take them with me to Boulder to build up my new permaculture sheet mulch so and I save all my resources like if I have wood resources whatever I save them and I'm going to take them with me and I have a little bit of container gardening going on in a, a small little bed here but you know the backyard has a ton of potential um, you could do earthworks back here a whole nother food forest chickens um, you could do a chicken chicken run on the side of the house um, so but these are the natural finds and you know just having them sit here they just they're just a lot more fine than like the chunky free stuff you get from Excel. So it's just going to break down into soil a lot faster for you. Um, and you know, I recommend them. I really like them. So they're a good mix of stuff and they just break down faster. So if you're looking for fast in Colorado, because I think, um, Colorado is so dry, you know, I tried to do a, a hugel culture and, um, it was an above ground one and it just, nothing would grow in it. I mean, I, I did it for like four years, so, or three years and nothing would grow in it really. So I think I'm doing an in-ground hugel culture. I'll try that at the next community garden at my next spot. There's one more thing I forgot to show you that I think is really important if you're setting up um, a sheet mulch system in your front yard in Denver. Um, I have to show you this over here. This. It's covered up by the hollyhocks. That's why I forgot to mention it. But ugh. Um, back here, you see this little yellow flag right here? That marks the gas line. Um, so before you set up your sheet mulch, you want to get your gas line marked. And um, the reason I don't have another tree 
or a guild in this area is because I didn't want anything um, to with big root systems to get into the gas line. So I had to keep this, they call it a no-dig zone. So you call this free phone number and you get them to market. So you know what, I don't know. For me, I don't want to plant anything with big root systems over the gas line. Um, you know, speaking of fruit trees, I think a lot more fruit trees could be added to my system now that it's been up a couple years. Um, because my understanding now with fruit trees is you can really prune them to keep them small in a system like this. And I think I don't have enough. <laughs> so definitely adding more fruit bushes, fruit trees. Um, I try to plant the stuff that I actually want to eat. So be careful in your selections. But so if you have any questions about this, you know, contact me. Um, I'm happy. I've been doing like some consultations with people when you have time and, you know, I give my, I donate my time. I, I do this um, because I love it and I want other people to do this. Um, I just been studying about perennial vegetables. There's a lot of other cool perennial vegetables that do well in Colorado that could be added to the system. You could make this a totally perennial system and maybe just add a little nitrogen fixers in the spring and you're good, you're golden. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to be, have a ton of annuals. It doesn't have to be that labor intensive through the year. You can make this totally food, giving you food and low maintenance, um, no till gardening and just adding, you know, chopping and dropping and adding maybe some mulch um, or some compost in the spring. Um, and you know if or you could just fill this with annuals I mean in this section here I could just throw in a bunch of brassicas cucumbers I don't even have to trellis them they'll just crawl along the ground or any of your zucchinis or anything will fill in a space like this like like no tomorrow so if you want to have a mix of annual perennials that's what I did last year but um, okay thanks for watching my video sorry it's so long but I really wanted to document this before I sell the house so I can remember it thanks bye